So hello, everybody. Uh, we want to welcome you to another episode of Black Mountain Talks. Uh, today, we have a very special guest to announce, uh, Dragana Trivkovic. She is the director of the Center for Geostrategic Studies in Serbia and therefore a perfect guest for our show. Welcome, Dragana. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. We also uh, have our Mike uh, Mihailovic, who is also a member of Black Mountain Talks and a former military officer of the Yugoslavian Armed Forces, as well as the Canadian Armed Forces. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. So I would like um, to start with a rather, let's say, a soft question uh, for warming up, <laughs> Dragana. Um, could you give us your assessment um, about the Serbian economy nowadays? Um, thank you very much. I will uh, speak uh, in uh, Serbian. Um, yes. It's easier for me. Um, što se tiče srpske ekonomije, um, pa moram da kažem da nije lako objasniti, uh, jer sa jedne strane imamo neke investicije, ko, imamo gradnju nekih objekata novih, uh, investicije, međutim ono što je ključna stvar u ekonomiji to je da zapravo država mora da ima domaću privredu i domaću ekonomiju, odnosno da ima ekonomiju u svojim rukama, da bi mogla pre svega da obezbedi svoj suverenitet i da obezbedi boljitak za sobstvene građane. Uh, okay, I'm going to do interpretation. So uh, regarding to the Serbian economy, it's not really easy to explain that because uh, we can we can say that it's a, it's a bit complicated. Um, uh, Serbia has its own economy, but also we have uh, investment, foreign investments. Uh, and the Serbia is, is something between. So basically, Serbia need uh, Serbia need those in, uh, those investments, but also Serbia need to have uh, to develop further domestic production so that uh, rely more upon um, on uh, on resources. Dakle, nakon raspada Jugoslavije, bombardovanje 1999. godine od strane NATO, koje je uništilo praktično domaću privredu, jer kao što znamo, gađane su i, gađane i namenska industrija i prehrambrena industrija i tekstila, mnogobrojni industrijski objekti su porušeni, železničke pruge, putevi i tako dalje. Praktično Srbija do sada nije uspela da nadoknade i posebno ne domaću privredu. Dakle, rekli smo već da imamo strane investicije i da strane kompanije investiraju, ali ono što je ključno i problematično u ovom slučaju to je domaća privreda. Well, after the disintegration of Yugoslavia in 1990s, uh... The general trend was that basically economy start to to go down. The, the biggest problem was the war and, and uh, NATO aggression in 1999 because uh, NATO obviously they, uh, beside all all, all talkings that they're doing, they they hit uh, Serbian industrial object uh, objects which include uh, pure industrial stuff. Uh, the, the power plants, then they also hit uh, transportation nodes, uh, railways, they hit um, agricultural industry, agricultural uh, treatment uh, and um, processing plants. So basically Serbian economy was put pretty much behind uh, that was before 1999, put that uh, for, for many years. Uh, and, uh, I would say, just to add what Dragan uh, said, I, I, would, I would also add that the economy is not destroyed, but the economy was pushed back. Hardly. Serbia fortunately got some investments, uh, foreign investments, but uh, this this is long term, uh, long 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 term um, engagement. So uh, definitely, uh, Serbia will need uh, will need more. You know, not only not only to put uh, more things in industry, but also infrastructure. Because without without the proper infrastructure, Serbia is not really uh, going to advance how it was uh, really planned. In any case, that 1999 uh, bombardment uh, was a really uh, a heavy effect. Uh, heavy affected the whole Serbian, uh, whole Serbian uh, economy, and consequences are still. We can still feel uh, feel it today. Dakle, bivša Jugoslavija je imala neku vrstu planske ekonomije, državna preduzeća i ekonomija je dosta bila u državnim rukama. 
Međutim, onda smo imali period 90. godina za vreme raspada Jugoslavije privatizacije gde praktično su ta velika preduzeća koja su u vreme bivše Jugoslavije bila krajnje značajna i gradila recimo na Bliskom istoku strateške projekte i bila poznata u celom svetu, takođe tekstilna industrija, prehrambena, ona je bila privatizovana i to je bio jedan vrlo rekla bih nepravila način da ta privreda iz ruku države pređe u ruke privatnih lica. To je neki sličan proces koji se dešava i u Sovjetskom savezu gde praktično su državni resursi prešli u ruke oligarhije i što se toga tiče do danas se takođe osjećaju posledice. Well, uh, Yugoslavia uh, uh, had a planned economy, so basically there, there were a lot of uh, government-owned or state-owned uh, uh, big, big enterprises, uh, big companies, uh, which were uh, worldwide known uh, because, um, as Dragana said, it was a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, projects, uh, especially in, in the Middle East, Africa, in those, uh, those countries. I will just add a couple of companies there, like Energo Project, uh, uh, Mostogradnia, like bridge building companies, uh, uh, food industry. Uh, food the industry was uh, also extremely well because the, uh, the the companies that produce food exported all over the world uh, from North America to, to, to Asia Africa whatever so uh, and uh, but uh, after the collapse of Yugoslavia in 1990s uh, what really happened those big big industrial uh, state-owned industrial uh, enterprises they uh, the same the same fate uh, struck them like uh, like uh, like the country because they, they collapsed and uh, in uh, in that buffer what happened is that uh, uh, somebody or someone or some organizations they uh, they basically privatized those those companies and there is a there is a really uh, really good parallel with the, uh, with the former soviet union where, uh, that also has those big um, or huge uh, enterprises which were uh, suddenly uh, transferred from the from the state ownership to the to the ownership of the oligarchs um, i would just add something with this because in oligarch is something that we're using for the for the East European uh, business people, but um, in in the West uh, we call that uh, entrep entrepreneurs. Uh, so people uh, people that doing the stuff uh, on a certain way, but this is simply how uh, all those all of that politics are influencing and how the politics are uh, uh, putting stuff uh, in order in in some media. So basically, from plan economy that that was very functional, people had the jobs, people had a uh, uh, country had production, export. Uh, uh, in the turbulent 90s, everything basically collapsed, and many many of those uh, state-owned uh, companies were privatized. Uh, many of them are simply. Uh, uh, cut off uh, or, or or disintegrated in many many smaller units and i would add one one uh, sample um, for instance the last one one of those last state ownership uh, state owned companies rtb bor or copper smelter and mine in in bor serbia uh, i work, i used to work with that company from canada uh, was the last one that was privatized recently see you can see the trend from 1990s to 2020, I think 2020 or 2019, when the, the companies were privatized. So some, uh, something that lasted for more than, more than 20 years. Da, potrebno je reći da proces privatizacije zapravo nikada do kraja nije završen i kao što ste vi rekli, on je još uvek u toku, a pritom on je, pošto je izvedena na jedan vrlo netransparentan način, dosta zakomplikovao vlasničke odnose i još uvek traju suđenja koja su vezana za korupciju u samom procesu privatizacije. Tako da je to nešto što je zaista imalo jako negativan efekt na našu privredu ekonomiju, ali i na jedan čitav privredni zastoj, odnosno zaustavljen je razvoj, jer kao što smo rekli, mi još uvek se bavimo predmetom privatizacije iz 90. godina koja do kraja nije završena, a za to vreme nismo praktično ni podigli ekonomiju do onog nivoa koje je postojala pre raspada Jugoslavije, govorim sad konkretno o Republici Srbije, a nismo ni blizu da to uradimo. Yes, the, uh, the process of privatization uh, is still ongoing and uh, as you can see, as you can see uh, more than 30 years and uh, still we have some of those companies uh, that that are not uh, fully privatized, but also the the issue is that we in Serbia there there is uh, still unfinished uh, legal legal cases or legal processes uh, about the ownership, 
And um, all of that stuff is basically put some kind of brakes in the in the de development of uh, of the of the country as as, as the one one entity. So uh, and this trend uh, is basically um, dragging from the past, and uh, for, it will it will uh, it will be. Um, uh, a trend to say a trend that is going to continue for the time being, and uh, that stuff is the, that ongoing stuff is still preventing Serbia to even get to the to the to the development stage that was uh, in the night. Uh, let's say uh, earlier in the, when the Serbia was really part of um, of Yugoslavia, Serbia had a really really good uh, good industry. So uh, it will take a simple, it will take a many many years until Serbia really get back to uh, in full stand on its own legs, uh, figuratively meaning that Serbia will have uh, enough industrial strength and uh, in, enough uh, resources uh, to get back what is uh, and to become what it uh, really should be. Da, isto vremeno, dakle, posle, um demokratske promjene vlasti kako jedni nazivaju ili obojene revolucije kako drugi tumače Srbija je potpuno preusmerila i svoje političko i svoje ekonomsko opredeljenje, ovde dakle govorimo o ekonomiji i Srbija praktično posle 5. oktobera 2000. se preusmerila potpuno na saradnju sa Evropskom unijom. Već smo rekli da ove velike kompanije koje su radile do obojene revolucije su praktično bile najviše usmerene na tržište bivšeg Sovjetskog saveza Bliskog istoka afričkih zemalja i kao što ste vi isto spomenuli neke od kompanija Mostogradnja, Energoprojekt takođe to je bila ogromna kompanija koja je gradila investicijne projekte, dakle ali Jugoslavia je pre svega imala tržište rekli smo u ovim na ovim područjima i onda je usledio taj praktik ta promjena velika u opredeljenju gde su se zatvorila ova tržišta na koje je Srbija ranije imala prolaz i gde se usmerila Srbija političkim snagama i političkom voljom novih vlasti na saradnju, bezalternativnu saradnju sa samom Evropskom unijom i sad reći ćemo kakve efekte je to imalo na srpsku ekonomiju. Well, Srbija je da one um, one event uh, which we we can call a color revolution or um, changes uh, changes of um, of the uh, leadership uh, and uh, after that it, it happened on the october 5th the famous october 5th uh, when president milosevic uh, i'm telling this for the for the, uh, for the western public president milosevic overthrown and uh, uh, we can call that uh, democracy finally got in into serbia but um, what uh, what was the impact of, or in all of that? Uh, we previously mentioned those big uh, or huge uh, state-owned industrial um, enterprises, uh, and they had a market. They had a market in the former Soviet Union. They had a market in East, East European countries. They had a market in in Africa, Asia, uh, to mention a few. But uh, after after uh, those changes in 1990s and after changes in uh, in Serbia, you know, October 5th. Uh, um, uh, what really happened? Uh, those um, uh, those markets on the Eastern Europe and Asia they they, uh, they were not available uh, anymore because those companies basically didn't, uh, stopped to be what they what they were before. So Serbia, uh, uh, willingly or not, started to orient more to the to the cooperation with the European Union, and that was general trend uh, uh, in the beginning of um, the two thousand. Uh, to to be more oriented to the to the EU and the new economic uh, developments so the political leadership in Serbia was oriented on that way was it right or not uh, the time will tell and um, uh, but still the, the people uh, more or less can uh, can see or can feel what is the what, uh, what are those effects anyway so Serbia is uh, something that I would uh, I would add uh, between east and and, uh, and and west so serbia is trying to cooperate both to keep old so old um, um, old ways of uh, trading uh, cooperating with eastern european countries or um, asia and africa but also orienting a lot of uh, a lot of cooperation uh, to eu uh, a lot of that is politically motivated and um, the leadership is um, as we have in serbia in the 2000 uh, after the, the change of, of, of the power 
uh, is going on the, in that direction, more or less uh, with a certain degree. Da, e, znači objasnit ćemo kako je to uticalo e, na, pored toga što smo imali e, nedovršenu privatizaciju, uništenu ekonomiju, ali ovaj politički korak usmerenja ka Evropskoj uniji je po meni imao o, nekakav pojačavajući efekt na sve negativne posledice koje smo spomenuli. Dakle, Srbija je praktično prilagodila svoju ekonomiju i svoje tržište i svoj izvoz i uvoz Evropskoj uniji. Srbija je nakon petooktobarskih promjena počela da razvija stratešku saradnju i u toj saradnji je potpisala niz dogovora, pre svega dogovor o stabilizaciji i pridruživanju Evropskoj uniji, koji Evropska unija nije odmah usvojila, dakle on je nekoliko godina primenjivan jednostrano, što je bio kao dobar gest Srbije i nekakav gest dobre volje u smislu toga da Srbija izrazila ogromnu želju da se pridruži Evropskoj uniji. Međutim, to je sve imalo negativne posledice upravo na domaću privredu koja je najviše i pretrpela usled ovih negativnih drugih posledica kao što su privatizacija i kao što je bombardovanje 99. godine. Yeah, uh, it's in the turbulent time, uh, which were in the 1990s and beginning of 2000, Serbia, Serbia uh, economy suffered a lot. There was a lot of economical loss, uh, and that loss um, uh, affected the uh, affected population, affected uh, uh, the way how Serbian economy functioning. And uh, in, the, in that turbulent time, to, uh, to call that, the, there, was a, uh, there were steps uh, of uh, privatization, which we already mentioned, they were not finished uh, completely yet. And who knows when they will be finished, really. But Serbia definitely uh, uh, started to orient more toward the um, uh, EU, and uh, uh, they started like an export in, into the EU countries, but also uh, it started with import from, from EU countries. And um, I would add on this that Serbia uh, really started to import more than it should be necessary. That, that's, my, that's my personal opinion, because uh, Serbia, um, I would add one, one sample, the Dragon, that, you, uh, that I think that maybe it will be good for the Western, uh, uh, Western public to understand. Serbia was famous uh, for the food industry. Uh, Serbia was famous for the agricultural products, but after those political turbulences, political changes, uh, and unsolved uh, issues with privatization, Serbia started to import agricultural uh, uh, products, which uh, which was something that was in, to the to the whole Serbia history. It was not really uh, not really optimal to say, not really feasible uh, to do. So uh, turbulent time created uh, in, uh, problems in economy, created uh, problems with the political stuff, and Serbia is uh, uh, the, trying to, let us say more figuratively, Serbia is trying to swim in, the, in, in that kind of waters, uh, uh, waters with a lot of waves, and try to to float, try to uh, try to be on the, uh, to stay on the surface, and that uh, in, in this process of. Uh, uh, trying to solve the problems uh, you know, on economical and in political uh, uh, relations, but also uh, try to, uh, to repair the damage um, that was inflicted first by the NATO aggression and bombing, and um, all of that economical uh, collapse of many of those uh, state-owned uh, industries. Serbia is still trying to, uh, uh, to recover from, from all of that stuff and uh, is trying to, to do more cooperation uh, with uh, something that political sides uh, said that it's, it is uh, more strategically oriented uh, toward the European Union. Da, međutim, strateška saradnja sa Evropskom unijom ima mnogo veće pogodnosti za Evropsku uniju nego što se to može reći za Srbiju. Zapravo ja mislim da Srbija gubi u procesu evrointegracija dosta i da zapravo najviše gubi na ekonomskom polju. Evo zbog čega u nekom momentu Evropska unija je izdvajala iz svog opšteg budžeta čak i do 40% za pomoć poljoprivredi. 
Istovremeno, Srbija koja se strateški usklađivala za proces, odnosno ušla u proces evrointegracije i usklađivala za ulazak u Evropsku uniju, istovremeno srpski budžet je izdvajao negde maksimalno do 2% od opšte budžeta za pomoć poljoprivrednicima. Kao što ste vi rekli, Srbija je počela da uvozi mnogobrojne proizvode iz Evropske unije, koji su de facto počeli da zamenjuju domaće proizvode na domaćem tržištu. Zbog čega? Zato što domaća privreda nije mogla da bude konkurentna evropskoj privredi iz prostog razloga što smo rekli da 40% pomoći iz budžeta i 2% apsolutno ne mogu da se uporede. I u tom slučaju je, dakle, srpski poljoprivrednici su praktično počeli da nestaju sa srpskog tržišta, ali to To je što je interesantno, to je jedan proces i to je važno spomenuti koji se recimo desio i u drugim zemljama u okruženju koje su i postale članice Evropske unije. Ja bih tu spomenula Bugarsku koja je tipičan primjer. Recimo Bugarska je uvek bila najveći proizvođač paprike i veoma poznata po tome, a sada se dešava zapravo da Bugari vikendom dolaze u Pirot i u te južne srpske krajeve da kupuju papriku iz Srbije, jer je njihova takođe više, znači oni uvoze praktično iz drugih evropskih zemalja papriku koja nije to kvaliteta koju su oni proizvodili. Ja, this to call euro integration process is something that is more favorable to European Union than to Serbia. For the sake of numbers, for the sake of explanation how that stuff really work, for instance, EU will allocate 40% um, uh, of, of budget, let's say, for the, for the agricultural uh, sector. But in Serbia, that is only 2%, which is, uh, 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 in, in, and for that reason, Serbia got in, in the situation that uh, is out of, uh, out of uh, market, uh, simply because, uh, because the way how, how everything is set up. So the, uh, the, the basis of society, that farmer in Serbia, uh, simply uh, found out that it's not feasible uh, uh, to do any uh, to do any 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 large uh, uh, large size or any um, advanced uh, advanced way of doing production to do more production to do to put more products because he simply don't uh, don't, don't uh, he is an individual and his uh, his business individual business doesn't have any um, um, Uh, any support basically from the, from the government and does, uh, doesn't bring any doesn't bring any fruits uh, to, uh, to say uh, and uh, but this this uh, uh, general situation is not only related to Serbia because um, we, um, we can compare that with Bulgaria Bulgaria is also uh, known as is is a, um, uh, is, uh, a country that has a, a lot of farming agricultural products etc and uh, uh, they were also exporters but now uh, with the european politics regarding to the situation in uh, uh, on, on, uh, situation for the new uh, new members uh, farmers in bulgaria uh, got in that uh, dire straits so that they are now not able simply to do their uh, their products Uh, on the on the scale that they, they were done before so they have to come for them is actually much cheaper to go to serbia to in, in particular uh, uh let's say area of, of uh, city of pirot uh, to buy peppers which uh, uh, bulgaria was uh, really known as is one of the, uh, the the largest producers uh, in, in in entire europe so uh and from this we can see basically what is really going on in this uh this turmoil regarding to the agricultural products. So those countries which were uh, traditionally uh, related to the farm, uh, farming, uh, livestock or, uh, or vegetables or fruits, now uh, to say they're basically uh, forced to import that stuff or to go to other countries to buy that uh, for themselves. Ja, isti je slučaj sa nekim dugrim industrijama. Ja sam imala priliku da se uverim kada sam bila u Grčkoj, koja je također članica Europske unije. Obilazila sam područja van grada koja su nekad bila centar industrije i videla sam da su zatvorena i ja sam razgovarala i upitala Grke zbog čega ne radi ta industrija. Oni su mi rekli da je reč o građevinskoj industriji, proizvodnji cementa i da su ti industrijski objekti prestali da 
rade, zbog toga što je Grčka prestala da proizvodi toliko cementa, već je počela da uvozi nemački cement, gde je takođe grčka ekonomija na šteti zarad nekakvih interesa u Evropskoj uniji, možda političkih ili nekih drugih, ali to svakako nije interes privrednika u Grčkoj. Yeah, they're going to mention uh, one example that is not uh, that crisis regarding to the to the products is not only in the agricultural uh, industry but also in in other uh, other industries. Uh, she mentioned that uh, once she, she visited Greece and in Greece uh, she saw the uh, enterprises uh, and uh, one of those enterprises was the big uh, uh, cement factory and she spoke with uh, with the Greeks with the, with the workers there and uh, what they told her it's uh, simply they stopped uh, they stopped production. Uh, the, uh, what was in the route that they stopped the production, it's, they can be economical, they can be political, uh, whatever, but the, the, the issue is that now um, the Greece, that, that uh, once they had a, a cement factory, they are now forced to buy this, uh, that same cement, uh, to import that uh, cement uh, from, uh, from Germany. So in this case, um, Dragana mentioned a very good uh, example that domestic industry is shut down and instead of that domestic product, now they're forced to, uh, to import basically the same type of product from the other country. Uh, we can go in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the price, uh, price range of that. Is it really cheaper or not? But uh, without, without having a strong domestic industry, it's hard to, uh, to get any advance in the, in the, in the national economy. Da, i da se vratimo na Srbiju. Šta je ključni problem? Srpska ekonomija, a, to je takođe politička odluka, je usmerena dakle, na finansiranje stranih investicija. A, Srbija izdvaja iz budžeta velika sredstva i pored toga daje druge pogodnosti kao što je umanjivanje troškova recimo za struju ili oslobađanje poreza strane investitore koji dolaze u Srbiju da otvore fabrike. I poslednjih godina mi smo imali slučajeve da su posebno sa zapada, zapadne kompanije iz Austrije, iz Nemačke, iz Italije, takođe Francuske, otvarale kompanije u Srbiji i dobijale velika sredstva iz državnog budžeta za otvaranje tih fabrika. Takođe bila su subvencionisana i radna mesta gde je taj investitor dobijao recimo od po 20.000 evra za svako radno mesto. I šta je tu problem? Dakle, ako kažemo problem je da se ne pomisli problem su strane investicije. Ne, problem je što Srbija izdvaja novac za strane investicije, pritom radnici u Srbiji primaju veoma niske plate i to je nešto zašto se strani investitori zapravo odlučuju da dođu u Srbiju. U jednom periodu to je čak bilo i oko 200 evra mesečno plata, sada su možda negde i veće, 300 i 400, ali opet to je u odnosu na zapadnu Evropu mala plata. Dakle, stranim investitorima je to pogodno, a sa druge strane Srbija gubi. Zašto? Pa recimo mi smo izdvajali sredstva za otvaranje fabrike sokova ili čak za nekakvu proizvodnju svinskog mesa. Kao što ste vi pomenuli na početku, uopšte Jugoslavije je bila i čak stara Srbija, govorimo o istorijskim vremenima, poznata po proizvodnji hrane. Srbija je upravo, zapravo njena industrija bazirana na poljoprivredi i Srbija je dakle u stara vremena izvozila svinsko meso recimo u Austriju, proizvodila svoje sokove, a za vreme Jugoslavije je ta proizvodnja napredovala do toga da smo mi proizvodili i svoje avione i svoje kompjutere, međutim to je kasnije uništeno. Dakle, problem je zašto bi Srbija davala sredstva stranim firmama da otvaraju fabrike ukoliko mi apsolutno imamo sposobnosti da to sami proizvodimo i onda dalje negde izvozimo na neka druga tržišta. Well, if we go back now to Serbia, the uh, uh, situation is as follow. Serbian government in, in the, this transition process, uh, 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 they, they provide uh, foreign investors with the opportunity to invest in Serbia, to build the factories, to open the workplaces, with subventions uh, which, uh, which is counted, let's say, that they don't pay um, the taxes uh, for a certain amount of time, they don't pay... Uh, 
hydro costs. So basically everything is it's uh, on very, very low um, low cost for the foreign investors. And Serbia, uh, uh, what Serbia have done, Serb- the Serbian government, uh, they basically finance uh, foreign investors who come to Serbia to open the, the workplaces uh, so that they can employ Serbian people. Uh, in in uh, Thinking about this, um, uh, the issue is that uh, the workers that they start to uh, to do um, that stuff in, in the foreign uh, foreign factories, uh, they start to get uh, very very low salaries regarding to the European condi- uh, European uh, conditions. For instance, from 200, 300 to 400 euros at the beginning, now they came uh, to 200 euros per month. We are talking about monthly salary because in Serbia salaries are on, on a monthly basis. So it is re- really, really low. And Serbian government, for instance, uh, when they um, uh, they wanted to attract uh, foreign investors, they uh, it was um, counted up in, in, the, in the range of twenty thousand, uh, let's say twenty thousand euros per, per one worker per one wo- workplace, so that uh, the foreign investor can um, uh, can employ domestic uh, domestic labor. I would also add uh, that a lot of those um, uh, those big. Um, uh, companies, uh, state-owned companies that that, that were privatized, uh, uh, they were actually sold by those who privatized those those factories. They were actually sold to to, to the foreign investors. So the foreign investor come uh, and uh, in, invest their money, and they have those benefits without paying the taxes. And um, that is a big problem because uh, uh, the, the state, the government, lives on taxes. And if the foreign investor uh, is uh, exempt of, of paying the taxes or pay just just a fraction of that. Then the budget of the country is not filled with that money, and the question is uh, that will be my personal question: where that money is going? If that if that money is not going to in, into the budget, uh, also, uh, they're going to mention, uh, for instance, uh, the factory of uh, uh, that, that produce the juice or uh, factories that work uh, that produce the, the meat products. Serbia was famous uh, for, for the uh, for the meat products uh, since uh, Serbia was kingdom. In the uh, in the 19th century or uh, the beginning of 20th century, Serbia was exporter, the biggest exporter, let's say, of pigs, uh, very, uh, let's say, to Austria, Austria Hungary, and uh, all over the all, all over the Europe. But now Serbia was uh, was forced actually to import the, those meat products. Uh, I would also you know, Dragana's um, uh, explanation of, of, of her view. I would add a couple of things regarding, because my personal experience, what I saw, for instance, in, in, uh, in the city of Zrenjanin, there was a lot of agricultural industry, and uh, the, but there was also a metal working industry. There was also um, some companies that, that build, uh, that made uh, carpets. And what happened? Uh, uh, one big uh, carpet uh, factory, uh, they sold it to the foreign investor, foreign owner. Uh, the owner come, they uh, pack all of those machines. My friend was the guy who was uh, who handled that packing, the dismantling machines, packing into the to the truck and shipping that to the to the train so that uh, can be shipped out of the country. So they picked up every single uh, uh, machine, and those are those are huge machines. And those machines, the same investor, they they exported that to to India. So the the, the same investor bought the company in Serbia, basically destroyed, stripped it of uh, of equipment. And ship that to India, where the, uh, the production will be ten times or tenfold uh, cheaper than uh, than in Serbia. And it's not just just one uh, one sample. If you look, for instance, in the in the companies uh, in the metalworking companies, there is a, the companies that that produce uh, that, that was famous uh, uh, for the for the machine uh, uh, um, machine production. They have a lot of CNC machines. They have manual machines. Since early 1990s, everything is empty. Nothing is working again. Machines are simply sold almost in, in the scrap metal by the foreign owner. So that is the big. That is, in my view, one of the biggest, the biggest mistakes. If somebody wants to invest in Serbia, they have to keep the workers, but they have to keep production in Serbia, not just strip the factory of everything and sell that fa- uh, sell the equipment to, uh, send equipment to some uh, remote countries. Who knows where? Where they uh, they will continue working, and what we have will have just just the empty shell, empty empty buildings. So there is a yeah. many things that need to be uh, simply polished in Serbia. Da, mi sada već imamo dosta primera uh, gde su strane kompanije došle na srpsko tržište, dobile novac iz budžeta, kao što smo rekli, neke investicije od više miliona dinara, 
gde su dobijale ove druge pogodnosti i da su nakon od perioda recimo četiri ili pet godina koliko su imali ugovor o toj podršci i finansijskim sredstvima, gde su nakon isteka tog perioda zapravo zatvorile te fabrike. To je bilo već nekoliko takvih slučajeva gde se zapravo onda postavlja pitanje koji je interes države Srbije da na taj način finansira strane investitore koji zapravo koriste jeftinu radnu snagu u Srbiji, koriste pogodnosti naše resurse i kada zapravo iskoriste sve što mogu, pritom novac, kao što ste rekli, iznose na van Srbije, dakle on većim delom ne ostaje u srpskom budžetu, onda kada sve iskoriste, zatvore to i to postoji kao veliki problem u srpskom društvu da se postavlja pitanje kome je to u interesu zapravo. Yeah, they're going to now said uh, actually added stuff to the stuff that I mentioned because uh, Serbia uh, gave benefits to the foreign investors, uh, gave, uh, paid them to come to, to open the factories, uh, signed a contract, let's say, four to five years. But up, uh, after four to five years, those companies are leaving. They just used and abused uh, uh, Serbian government regarding to that. Uh, uh, in, uh, that investment, they use the cheap labor, and uh, and the, uh, they didn't contribute to the taxes, so that that uh, that country can can fill the budget, the the state can fill, uh, fill the budget, and uh, what happened after uh, four to five years, they simply pick pick up their stuff and leave, and in, uh, but because they uh, depends how the contract was signed with, with the government, they simply strip the factories of equipment, and people are again. Uh, on the uh, out on the, on, on the street so uh, th this is one of the of, of the samples and i would uh, i would like to add one one personal uh, uh, personal example what uh, to, to the sub the dragon mentioned um, for instance rtb bore huge huge copper uh, copper smelter and in, in mine they had a uh, fod it's a factory it's a part which was uh, uh, which employed maybe 800 people or even more uh, uh, that factory was the production uh, part of the company which produced everything related to the RTB needs. But what happened uh, in the 1990s, that part was sold to Austrian uh, Austrian client and became separate. Now, um, uh, during the during that transition time, uh, the labor force shrink for, the, uh, I think, in the best time, it was 2,000 people to, eight, to 800. Now it's uh, barely 100. So one huge, huge uh, company with, uh, with um, extremely good machinery was simply brought down to the bottom. And uh, this is one of the li live um, example of what really happened to many other, uh, other Serbian factories. And RTB, uh, which I came from Canada working for the uh, Canadian consulting company, we uh, we build a new smelter, we build a new new uh, new um, copper filtration uh, stuff there. But the problem was that we didn't hire Serbian companies to do the business. I insisted that uh, uh, for the my part, I was chief engineer in the in, uh, part of that project that all equipment must be produced in Serbia. But I was overruled by management because they didn't want to pay Serbian taxes. So equipment was imported from uh, from Turkey, from India, from uh, Chile. So Ser uh, Ser uh, Serbia only provided uh, manual labor. Everything else was purchased uh, aside. So uh, as a person, as, as a Serbian, I was, I was really related to that part. And I, I, I insisted that everything must be Serbian made. But because of some deals, whatever, between... Uh, leadership company leadership and also government is one in that everything was simply overruled so i have to be uh, i had to uh, i was forced to work with the foreign equipment in the country which can produce the, uh, the same equipment for the uh, for the much less price than it was uh, imported just because the uh, investor uh, didn't want uh, uh, to pay serbian taxes this is just one bad example how serbian economy is uh, really going in some in, in this direction I da zaključimo sad vezano za srpsku ekonomiju, ovo sve što smo rekli i iz toga se može zaključiti da u procesu eurointegracija srpska ekonomija slabi, srpska ekonomija prelazi u ruke stranih kompanija, što je veoma loše i iz tog razloga ja smatram da Srbija mora podhitno da promeni ekonomsku politiku između ostalog i da preispita odnose ka Evropskoj uniji, odnosno sam isplativo samog procesa evropskih integracija, 
Posebno sada u uslovima kada dobijamo otvorene političke ucene, mogu slobodno da kažem, dakle mislim da Srbija mora da preispita ono što je ključno za ekonomiju. Srbija bi morala da preusmeri sobstvena sredstva u razvoj sobstvene domaće privrede i ekonomije. To bi podstaklo i neke druge jačanje nekih drugih segmenata kao što je i suverenitet zemlje ja mislim i mislim da će u narodnom periodu ukoliko se Srbija bude odlučila na takvu politiku, na promenu politike, morati da se bavi procesom nacionalizacije nekih kompanija koje su otuđene možda bi time mogo da se zaokruži taj proces privatizacije koje je krenuo od 90. godina to conclude this uh, uh, part of interview regarding to the Serbian economy. Uh, even if it's looked at in, in some aspects, Serbian um, economy is advancing. In reality, it's it's it, it's a different because the Serbian uh, Serbian economy is getting weaker because all of those reasons that that, that were previously mentioned. The process of uh, EU integration is no, does not look as it is uh, presented. Serbia. Uh, Serbia is under pressure. It is economic pressure, it is political pressure, and we'll talk about that later. So Serbia needs to re-examine uh, approach to all of this Euro integration, uh, Euro integration system and uh, start to, to put on um, funds, uh, on means to in, in own economy. So the, um, in more or less to be less dependent of the of, the, of those uh, of those um, connections that Serbia had now with uh, with EU, not to break the line, not to break the con uh, connections at all, but uh, Serbia need to, to be more independent in uh, regard to uh, to its own economy. Uh, in this case, it may even uh, have to go like uh, I would say positive step back to nationalize some of, the, of those key uh, key aspects of, of the industry, and so that government can finally have uh, again. Um, uh, control over the uh, the major uh, the major production abilities of the uh, of the country. So uh, when I when I said uh, when I said a positive step back, nationalization of the of, of the of the huge um, strategically important uh, economic um, objects or economic enterprises will be something that uh, will put the government again in the control. Or their own own uh, natural natural uh, and industrial resources. With us, I will uh, see. I'm not inter uh, I'm not uh, translating, but I'm interpreting uh, the, the meaning. And both you, you and I, Dragana, we, we agree with uh, with that stuff. So it yes, is, yes. Uh, yeah. So sure. that is the situation. Serbia need to make a probably that uh, uh, that positive stop or positive steps back, and uh, so that it can uh, simply put uh, put back on track. Once economy that was uh, destroyed co in continual uh, way since 1990s. Okay, uh, hvala vam puno. Uh, thank you very much. Um, this question, uh, this this answer, it was very, um, um, yeah, uh, excessive, and this is good. It is very important. I think um, it is very important that people hear this story. And I also want to say that I wrote also ex excessively about this uh, topic in Economics and Empires 1 and 6, if somebody wants to read it. So I fully agree with Dragana here. And I think um, in the future we should talk about, uh, again about this uh, topic. But now I would like to go um, to the next question. It is a rather um, more political question. Let's call it like this. Um, could you explain us um, the, cur the current um, relations between Serbia and um, Republika Srpska at the one hand and um, Montenegro at the other hand? Uh, da, i Republika Srpska i Crna Gora su države u okruženju uh, gde živi dosta Srba. A za američku javnost je to komplikovano da razume šta se desilo nakon raspada Jugoslavije, jer Jugoslavija je bila država koja je objedinjavala gotovo sve teritorije na kojima žive Srbi. Nakon raspada Jugoslavije, ona se raspala po komunističkim granicama koje su de facto veštačke i mnogo Srba je ostalo da živi izvan granica 
Srbije. Za Srbiju ja mislim jako važno da razvija stratešku saradnju upravo sa Republikom Srpskom koja je deo bivše Republike Bosne i Hercegovine, odnosno sada države Bosne i Hercegovine i posebno sa Crnom Gorom. Dakle, mi imamo istorijske veze sa Crnom Gorom. Crna Gora je istorijski bila druga srpska država na Balkanu i de facto crnogorci su Srbi, mada naravno i to je teško objasniti za američku javnost koji je proces bio kreiranja novih nacija recimo na prostoru bivše Jugoslavije. Ok, so for Republika Srpska and Montenegro, Crna Gora, kao bi se i Srbijan, They are now de facto in, um, independent countries, but uh, before in, in, Yugos in uh, former Yugoslavia, they were just integral parts. Uh, and uh, these parts are traditionally and historically uh, populated by majority of the Serbian population. Uh, and for Serbia, there is a there is a really really uh, deep connections with those uh, uh, with those countries, and of course, Republika Srpska is now uh, part of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. But uh, uh, for uh, for Serbia, these two uh, these two countries are um, as I uh, as previously mentioned, they're, they're historically um, uh, Serbian, and as Dragana said, uh, Montenegro is uh, is uh, second Serbian uh, second Serbian country, and for the Ameri for the benefits of, of American uh, or Western listeners, let's just uh, say a few uh, few things about that. Montenegro uh, was uh, was a kingdom before uh, World War One, and in uh, before that, but they always consider themselves as the Serbs. So, uh, and often in Serbia, we call that it's a Serbian Sparta. And uh, for, uh, uh, there is a lot of, there's almost uh, uh, an, an unbreakable connections bet uh, between those, uh, between the, uh, these countries. And uh, Serbia is always, um, uh, we, we always look uh, for those uh, those countries as, as a brotherhood because we are, the, we are simply the same nation. We are the same people. Different, different geographical locations. We speak with a different accent in the different uh, different parts. But doesn't matter. There is Americans. Uh, uh, if you go, if you compare it with, with the U.S., there is U.S. East Coast, uh, Midwest, and uh, in the West Coast, there is a different accent. So people in Texas speak different accent than people in uh, the people in Wyoming or uh, people in Massachusetts. But they're all Americans. So. Uh, uh, if you if you put a put a parallel, there is a Serb, uh, Serbs in Bosnia, Serbs in uh, Bosnia Herzegovina, uh, there's uh, or Republika Srpska, there's Serbs in uh, Montenegro, the Serbs in, in Serbia. We are all Serbs. So for us, this this is uh, something which is unbreakable. The relations be, uh, between us and our brothers over uh, over there is uh, simply unbreakable. We are the same. We are the same people. Da, kada bismo krenuli da objašnjavamo istoriju, recimo to bi bio uvod od pet minuta kao uvod u Putinov intervju kod Taka Carlsona, gde je umesto pet minuta govorio, ja mislim, više od pola sata, zato što je to jako teško objasniti, jer mi živimo na starom kontinentu na kome su se kroz istoriju dešavale dinamične promene, gde se često i ta sama istorija zloupotrebljavala i falsifikovala, a posebno ako imamo u vidu koliko je u današnje vreme, dakle što, smo mi, što mi kao pojedinci možemo i kao društvo da svedočimo, koliko je falsifikata, da kažemo, plasirano u javnosti, i koliko tog inženjeringa, društvenog ili socijalnog inženjeringa je prisutno, dakle onda je zaista krajnje komplikovano posebno nekome ko je na drugom kontinentu da razume procese koji se dešavaju. Tako da ja mislim da ovom prilikom nemamo vremena da ulazimo u, u tu priču, ali ovo što ste rekli jako bitno i to su možda neke osnove da se razume koliko su kompleksni ti odnosi unutar, odnosno između Srba koji žive u drugim državama, koliko je teško objasniti pozadinu, istoriju, kako smo se našli u drugim državama, zašto su od nekih, od, u nekim državama sada drugi narodni, jer postoji jedan trend preformatiranja Srba u Crnoj gori, u Crnogorce i tako dalje i tako dalje.
Yeah, if, if we continue uh, with this five minutes introduction, uh, we can get into the situation that we have uh, Taki Carlson and President Putin interview. So we talk about half an hour for the minimum uh, minimum history, but we don't have that time. Even it, it will be really, really great to, to discuss about that, that, uh, uh, that part. Uh, history of Balkans, uh, history of Serbian people and all, all other people in the Balkans is very complex because uh, to summarize, it was the crossroads of empires. I, 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 uh, I would call it um, uh, the place where empires collide, and Serbia uh, was always on, on that on that on those crossroads. Since the gate of nations were open, so that people uh, during the Roman time they came and uh, started to inhabit uh, uh, areas, they mix they mix with the with, with the locals. Uh, so, oh, long story short, uh, Serbia. Uh, it is very hard uh, to understand uh, without really deep diving into the in, 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 into the historical facts, and also uh, the social engineering, engineering, and uh, basically like almost like a turbo folk history, which is coming uh, in, in in some uh, some aspects. So that uh, uh, that turbo folk stuff is uh, trying to historical facts to twist it and turn it. So that um, uh, it's looked like that something is uh, something which which was on the top is uh, actually on the bottom and vice uh, vice versa. So um, uh, marketing, media, everything is uh, doing almost like a midwife in all of that uh, uh, in all of this situation. But uh, uh, for the Western uh, for the for the Western uh, viewer, uh, if if they want to understand uh, Serbia, it's really need to, uh, and the whole situation in, in the Balkans, it's really need to dive into, into historical roots of, of the problems. And diving into the, into, into the historical roots, you can find the way and to, to understand why, uh, for instance, so many people of one nation living now in the, in the other countries, why some countries suddenly become uh, nations which are which are not not uh, not nations before. And, and, so very complicated stuff, but uh, you know when you have a country which is on the on the intersection, when you have heavy trucks go, moving back and forth, uh, empires, Ottoman Empire going to the to the west, uh, uh, Crusade is going to to the east, and every every one of them is going to over Serbian territory. So uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can understand why everything is so complicated. In the, yes, in, like in, uh, in like uh, like our great science uh, Jovan Sić said, we built. Uh, house in the middle of the road so oh, the road is, yeah yeah yes uh, da nastavićemo dakle ako govorimo o sadašnjim odnosima uh, crne gore uh, trebalo je uh, treba spomenuti da je u, ra, u procesu raspada jugoslavije pre uh, samostalne srbije bila zajednica uh, srbije i crne gore kao što smo već rekli mi imamo istorijske veze i praktično mi smo isti narod. Međutim, 2006. godine je se te zajednica Srbije i Crne Gore raspala. Tadašnji apsolutni vladar Crne Gore, Milo Đukanović, je organizovao referendum za koje postoje mnogobrojni dokazi da je taj referendum de facto izveden jednim nelegalnim putem, odnosno da, je, da su rezultati da rezultati referenduma ne odgovaraju činjeničnom stanju i onome što je narod želeo, ali to se desilo, dakle 2006. godine se Crna Gora odvojila od te zajednice i postala samostalna država. Međutim, ono što je usledilo je to da je de facto Đukanović bio poznat po antisrpskoj politici koju je realizovao gde je praktično vodio proces odvajanja, rekli smo odvojila se država de facto, ali on je vodio proces jednog istorijskog odvajanja, kulturološkog odvajanja Crne Gore od Srbije na sve moguće načine i sada bih rekla da je situacija bolja od kako je Milo Đukanović sišao sa vlasti u Crnoj Gori. Mislim da su se ti procesi zaustavili, situacija se nije mnogo popravila i treba će vremena da se popravi ta šteta koju je on naneo, ali su odnosi daleko relaksiraniji nego što je to bilo u vreme vladovine Mila Đukanovića. 
Yeah, regarding to Montenegro, the relationship between Montenegro and Serbia, uh, for the viewers, it's very important to say that after the collapse of so so Socialist Federative Republic of Yugoslavia, Serbia and Montenegro formed uh, what was left of the former country, and it was called uh, Yugoslavia, Republic of Yugoslavia. But... Uh, 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 what what really happened in 2006? Uh, the local uh, uh, supreme leader, to call it uh, Milo Djokovic, uh, was also, I would add, that uh, uh, connected not only with the uh, with the political establishments uh, in the West, uh, but also was involved in some economical. Uh, illegal um, deals regarding to the um, uh, transfer of cigarettes from Montenegro to Italy to the speedboats. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Milo, was, um, Milo is the supreme leader of uh, Montenegro, organized the referendum. And on that, uh, that referendum, which is, there is a fact, there is evidences that was, uh, that, uh, was not really performed legally. Uh, some, uh, according to Montenegro uh, government at that time, majority of people, uh, not, not the high majority, but just that uh, small drop that uh, they spilled the glass, voted to, um, uh, for Montenegro independence. So in, uh, in that case, uh, old Yugoslavia, uh, the, the new Yugoslavia stopped exist, or mid Yugoslavia stopped exist, and Montenegro became the independent country. Uh, what really happened uh, after? Because we are the, we are the same people, we have a, a lot of uh, cultural uh, connections, uh, economical connections, but uh, uh, Milo and his uh, henchmen, what they've done, they started to put a wedge between Serbia and Monte uh, Serbia and Montenegro, uh, trying to break that uh, those uh, those brother uh, brotherly connections, and that trend was uh, pretty intensive uh, intense during the uh, period after uh, after two thousand six. They even um, uh, recognized. Kosovo is an independent country, uh, which uh, was for many, many people from Montenegro is, is almost like a blasphemy. It's uh, something that uh, it's out, out, outrageous. Uh, but uh, since uh, the supreme leader was uh, removed from his position and his, uh, his henchman government is uh, uh, not in the power anymore, this, uh, there is, a, there is a evident uh, there are, that there is a... Uh, improvement in the relationship bet, uh, between people in Montenegro and uh, people in, in Serbia. And I would add uh, just one sample. For instance, there is more people of uh, Montenegro regions living in Belgrade than there is actual actual population of uh, Montenegro. <laughs> right. And I, I also have Mont uh, Montenegro um, um, roots, uh, mine are from, from the uh, mountains, from... Uh, uh, we are, I'm not going to get uh, deep in, in, into that stuff, but uh, yeah, I, I always consider myself as, as a Serbian from that my um, old, old, old grand, 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 grandfathers uh, came from uh, from Montenegro. So it is what it is. We are, we are, we are, we are one, one nation, one people, one nation. A što se tiče Republike Srpske, to je situacija nešto drugačija. Republika Srpska je deo države Bosne i Hercegovine, odnosno entitet koji po Dejtonskom sporazumu koji je zapravo zaustavio, kojim je završen rat na teritoriji bivše Republike Bosne i Hercegovine u sastavu Jugoslavije. Dakle, ona je u sastavu druge države, ali po Dejtonskom ovlašćenju ona bi trebalo da ima dosta, da kažemo, suvereniteta, odnosno dosta prostora za vođenje neke sobstvene politike. Međutim, problem je da, s obzirom na to da je arhitektura te države Bosne i Hercegovine, koja je praktično projektovana dejtinskoj sporazum je jako kompleksna i de facto Bosna i Hercegovina je država kojom se vlada spolja, dakle bez obzira što ona ima svoju vladu i svoje poslovnike i svoj parlament i ministre, glavnu reč vodi visoki predstavnik koji bi trebalo da se bira u jedinim nacijama po određenom protokolu, međutim sadašnji predstavnik Kristijan Šmit je zapravo izabran nelegalnim putem, a on nameće svoja pravila. To je, ja mislim, još jako kompleksnije 
da shvati publika u Sjenjem američkim državama, ali ono što je bitno u tim odnosima je to da je Republika Srpska i njen predsjednik Milorad Dodik zapravo uvijek bila usmerena na Beograd i na razvoj saradnje sa Beogradom, što je u suštini jako dobro za nas. Ja bih gledanje tu Republika Srpska. Vi imate se, da je part of the other country, but this is the entity in another country. So let's go back now to the Bosnia and Herzegovina and the civil war that was there in the 1990s. After the civil war stopped with the Dayton Agreement, the Republika Srpska became the separate entity, but within the Bosnia and Herzegovina Federation. So there is two entities, basically. It's Republika Srpska and how they call it, Herceg Bosna, I would say, with Bosnia and Muslim entity and the Croatian entity. But Republika Srpska was always and always will be connected more to Serbia than to the rest of the Federation. And even Bosnia is an independent country. They have a parliament, they have a government, they have ministers, they have a military army. The problem with Bosnia is that it's not ruled by that government. Bosnia is ruled by somebody that was put aside. This is the high commissioner. The high commissioner is somebody which supposed to be elected or appointed by the UN, but uh, they're going to mention the Christian Schmidt, right, is the name of, uh, of that guy. So um, that commissioner now is the one who is, uh, who is in charge, basically, who is the sheriff in town, to say. So he is the one who pulled the trigger in Bosnia. And uh, as he was in, elected by uh, something similar to, let's say, to high commissioner, European high commissioner, some some entity elected guy put that guy and tell him okay go to Bosnia now you are the one who is who is in charge. Uh, obviously that guy is uh, working against the interest of Republika Srpska and the president of Republika Srpska, uh, Mr. Miller uh, Dodik, uh, in his speeches he said that he's more connected with Belgrade than Sarajevo. He's, he has nothing to do with uh, with the government in Sarajevo regarding to many questions. So uh, for, for Serbia, our brothers uh, on the west side of the Drina. Uh, they will be always uh, considered consider as uh, not to say uh, not to say independent, but they they will always be a, uh, as a, as a living entity inside inside the other country. And uh, between us and between them, I mean Serbia and uh, Republika Srpska, there, there are unbreakable uh, connections. Uh, what is the uh, but why is all of that? After the uh, Dayton Agreement, uh, Bosnia was split. Almost like almost like a leopard uh, leopard skin pattern. So there, um, if you look at uh, if anybody of viewers look at the, the map of Bosnia and Herzegovina, it will see that those borders uh, between the entities are completely uh, um, unnatural. But it is what it is. At least the war stops. So the civil war stops, and people now can, can freely move from one part uh, to another. And uh, Bosnia is uh, in this way it's some. It's more or less um, artificial, artificial country, but with, with, uh, but still functioning. But it's functioning because they have uh, that um, supreme, uh, supreme commissioner set up by somebody else. So, uh, what is going to, what is what will be with Bosnia in the future? It's hard to say. I mean, it's a time, uh, simply time, uh, time will tell. But between the Republika Srpska and Serbia, those connections will never, uh, never stop. Da, da bismo objasnili američkoj publici, možda bolje mogu da razumeju situaciju i na prostoru bivše Jugoslavije, ali i na prostoru bivšeg Sovjetskog saveza, zašto je ona tako kompleksna i zašto postoje veštačke granice koje su oba slučaja nacrtale komunističke vlasti koje su došle nakon u, odnosno, u Sovjetskom savezu u Moskvi nakon oktobarske revolucije, a u Srbiji, odnosno bivšoj Jugoslaviji, za vreme drugog svjetskog rata gde se vodio građanski rat između Četnika i Partizana, kao što je to bilo između Crvena armije i Belogardejaca u Sovjetskom savezu. Šta je suština? Dakle, te vlasti koje su izvale revoluciju 
u Carskoj Rusiji, dakle koje su odgovorne za slom Carske Rusije, to je pre svega lider Lenin i Kerenski i druga lica Trotski koja su bila podržavana od strane centara moći u Evropi i u Londonu i u Berlinu. Oni su nakon dolaska na vlast zapravo želeli da federalizuju carsku Rusiju pa su, ali po uzoru na Sjedinje američke države. Dakle, oni su primenili model, pošto Sjedinje američke države su nastale spajanjem država i dodavanjem i kupovinem, pa su centralizovane u Sjedinje američke države. A ovdje se desi obrnut proces da su oni teritoriju koja je bila de facto homogena, dakle teritorija ne homogena u smislu njenog stanovništva, već njenih granica, Carsku Rusiju, oni su onda podelili, nacrtali veštačke granice koji dan danas postoje i zbog kojih se danas i dan danas vode sukobi. Ja, for the American viewer, to understand a little bit of why it's so complex in the Balkans, bear in mind that those borders were drawn by the communist government after the after the world war ii so somebody uh sat in the in the, some kind of politburo or whatever so they uh, they took the pencil and they they draw the borders there is a strong parallel between uh, yugoslavia and that artificial boundaries uh, which were pulled uh, which were put in uh inside uh, of, of the one country which was on that time let's say um we can call that unified but also in the soviet union um, the forces which financed the revolution and the overthrow of the, of the uh, tsaristic, uh, tsaristic Russia, uh, those forces put Lenin, put a Trotsky or Bronstein, who is basically Hazard. So, um, and all of those, uh, all of those, uh, those guys uh, the, the, to rise the, to to abuse the, the the bad situation that were really on the front and uh, and with the workers. So uh, those people they created um, uh, artificial artificial borders between one united uh, united country. Look now for the parallel with, with the United States. Uh, how United States uh, become the uh, united? There is a different uh, different parts, different uh, different countries uh, under the British rule. So they united uh, thirteen colonies. Um, I think uh, yeah, thirteen colonies. Then they started to add other, other portion of the country. Expansion on the west, uh, conquering the wild west, um, exterminating uh, Indian or native popul population, buying Alaska. Uh, so um, adding the countries, uh, made uh, other other territories. One country became uh, united, but in uh, in Russia, in the, uh, what later became the Soviet Union, one one country was divided inside, so co completely opposite, 100, 180 degrees uh, uh, turn. How our stuff was uh, was in Russia. And Yugoslavia was not uh, was just uh, just a micro uh, Soviet Union regarding to that uh, uh, that artificial uh, uh, split between uh, between the regions and. The root of all of these uh, wars now in the former Soviet Union and Yugosla former Yugoslavia was actually in, in those uh, artificial uh, arti artificial boundaries that were put by somebody who were uh, who were controlled not from the people of uh, native people in, in the country but from somebody who were put uh, by somebody else by the by intelligence services. Uh, from the West. Let's just say that Lenin, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, uh, he, he was brought uh, through Finland by the German, uh, uh, by the German uh, intelligence. So who was Tito? He, nobody knows who, 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 is, who was Tito really. Is he Polish? Is he Jews? Or is he Russian? He, is he son of the Franz Joseph the first? Uh, nobody, know, nobody knows. But uh, the fact is he was not somebody who was native from, uh, from that area. Uh, the only thing that we know about him, he was uh, he was our supreme leader, uh, and uh, but the problems was not only in him, but problems was also with people around him, henchmen. So the henchmen uh, are the one who who, who actually uh, uh, contributed to the to the splits within the, within the country. Everything was nice when the country was uh, uh, under one rule, but uh, when the situation changed and when those when all of those countries became independent. Then they started uh, to uh, to talk about the boundaries, about uh, uh, some some different uh, who knows from where uh, problems, uh, who knows how long those pro problems exist. So that's the reason why we have all of these wars on the former Soviet Union territory, and we had the problem uh, the, uh, the problems in Yugoslavia.
da ne zamaramo javnost sa, sa previše sa da. istorijom bit će im dosta teško i komplikovano da, da shvate. A, o, završilo bi to vezano za regionalnu saradnju sa zaključkom da je za Srbiju od krajnje važnosti dakle, da razvija strateške veze i stratešku saradnju sa Crnogorom, a, takođe sa Republikom Srpskom, odnosno i sa Bosnom i Hercegovinom, jer praktično i muslimansko stanovništvo je takođe etničik i srpskog porekla. A, takođe i sa današnjom Makedonijom, a, koja je takođe socijalnim inženjeringom de facto odvojena. A, međutim, a, suština je u tome, dakle, to je ono što je naš interes, interes države Srbije i nacionalni interes. Međutim, a, postoji jedan drugi projekat u regionu koji se forsira, a, to je projekat Đorđa Soroša Čuvenog, on se zove Open Balkan a, ili Otvoreni Balkan, gde zapravo se Srbija gura u integracije sa Albanijom a, i Severna Makedonija takođe i taj proces je u toku, a, a, dakle, a, ovde se radi o integracijama koje ni malo nisu prirodne, koje ni malo nisu podobne za Srbiju, jer znamo da postoji projekat Velike Albanije koji na kraju krajeva je i razlog zašto je Kosovo odvojeno od Srbije što se tiče albanske strane, što se tiče NATO drugi, je treći razlog, dakle otvaranje vojne baze na teritoriji Srbije, ali za Srbiju nikako nisu pogodne te integracije u okviru projekta Open Balkan. I to jeste projekat Đorđa Soroša, ako pogledate sve sastanke vezane za taj projekat u regionu, svim sastancima prisustuje sin Đorđa Soroša, Alek Soroš, koji je praktično supervizor tog projekta. Yeah, to conclude this, um, this part, uh, actually we can talk about this for hours <laughs> regarding to the historical background, but um, for Serbia it's important to keep a strategic uh, partnership uh, and connections with all, uh, with Republika Srpska, with um, uh, with uh, Montenegro, with Bosnia Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, with Northern Macedonia, with Croatia, with all of those those parts, uh, because this this is the only way how, thing, uh, how things can work. Uh, what is interesting is that... Uh, who else than George Soros uh, um, and his uh, NGOs are uh, putting his fingers uh, in, in, in the territory of former Yugoslavia and now they're talking about the Balkan, open Balkan uh, concept, uh, which includes uh, kind of artificial, uh, artificial pushing Serbia, Albania, North Macedonia in some kind of... Uh, Open, open integration, and of course, uh, George Schwartz or George Soros is not um, not anymore in in, in this field uh, because, because he transferred all, all of the responsibility to his son. But the legacy of his father is going to uh, is going to continue, and this uh, this artificial integration of pushing Serbia in something which is not 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 really natural is something that uh, Serbia need to uh, need really to pay attention because uh, that can be uh, that can create uh, the, the the problems down the road so Serbia is open Serbia has to be open to, uh, to corporations by all means but uh, there is a national interest that Serbia really need to to pay attention and uh, not to just blindly go uh, in something that may look lucrative at the beginning but on the end it uh, is something that will break uh, somebody's back uh, again, uh, NGOs, uh, Soros. Uh, from my personal experience, whenever those guys put their uh, put their uh, their feet, uh, there's a big, big problem. Da, so, da, dakle, za Srbiju je ključno to da razvija saradnju sa u okviru uh, teritorije bivše Jugoslavije, sa onim zemljama gde živi srpsko stanovništvo, i ekonomski, kulturno i na sve moguće načine. A što se tiče samog Balkana. Balkan je dakle opet istorijski prostor gde su uvek mnogobrojne strane sile imale svoje interese, uključujući Veliku Britaniju, Tursku, Francusku, Nemačku, Ameriku, sada imamo Tursku naravno, sada imamo i neke druge bliskoistočne igrače i Emirate, 
i Katara i tako dalje. Dakle, to je prostor gde razne sile imaju interese. Međutim, ono što je ključno, ako gledamo Balkan, Srbija je centralna zemlja Balkana, iako stalno govore zapadni Balkan u kome je Srbija, ali pogledajmo kartu Srbije, centralna zemlja Balkana, koje još zemlje su jako bitne na Balkanu i mislim da je jako bitno da Srbije razvija sa njima saradnju. To su Bugarska i to su Grčka. To su takođe pravoslavne zemlje i mislim da su to zemlje na Balkanu koje bi trebalo da imaju stratešku saradnju međutim problem je da strane sile koje imaju drugačije interese nikako ne dozvoljavaju tu stratešku saradnju u Bugarske, Grčke i Srbije i to je ja bih rekla istorijski problem jer setimo se kada je bilo reči o tome da Balkan treba da pripada balkanskim narodima, naravno prvo se Velikoj Britaniji to ta ideja nikada nije sviđala. Dakle, postoje mnogobrojni procesi i mešanja stranih interesa koji ne dozvoljavaju da se razvije saradnje između ove tri zemlje, koje su ključne zemlje Balkana, velike zemlje i koje imaju mnogo toga zajedničkog na čemu bi mogle da baziraju svoju saradnju. Ja, well, Srbija, it is in, it is in Serbian interest to, to have a both economical and political uh, strong cooperation with uh, all neighbor, uh, neighbor, neighboring countries. Uh, so uh, all countries from the uh, former Yugoslavia, then countries, uh, all traditional uh, neighbors, Slovenia, uh, Bulgaria, uh, etc. So, uh, uh, but uh, uh, Balkan is, uh, is is specific because uh, as we previously talked about that, it was it is simply uh, on the crossroads. So interest from first from the Ottoman Empire, Austro-Hungaria, Germany, uh, Russia, United Kingdom, uh, France, uh, everything was uh, everything was just uh, uh, gathered around uh, and in, uh, in in the Balkans. Uh, also now in, in the modern times we have uh, uh, Turkey, we have some new uh, new players in the game like uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Emirates. Uh, so uh, pretty much a, a lot of players are involved. And uh, one thing that we should pay attention is that, and which is probably one of the most important things, leave the Balkan to Balkan uh, to Balkan people. But. Uh, Cooperation bet between uh, Balkan countries, uh, like uh, for instance, traditionally Orthodox countries like uh, Serbia, Romania, and Bulgaria. Uh, Greece, Greece. Interest in the, Greece, yeah, uh, yeah, Greece, of course, uh, uh, was never in the interest of the, of the big powers. So it, it was since since Serbia became independent, there was always interference. Always somebody is interfering with with uh, with, with Balkan countries. The, uh, I would add uh, also that uh, the last time that those Balkan countries were really united was right at the beginning of the of the first Balkan War when the Ottoman Empire was kicked out from uh, for for good from uh, from Balkans. But after interference of uh, Austro-Hungary and Germany, Bulgaria turned their back and the st strike Serbia and Greece. So that that's, that was the beginning of the, of the second uh, Balkan War, and the uh, and the third Balkan War or First World War actually uh, was uh, just a continuation of uh, all of that uh, all of those processes. So the foreigners simply sticking their nose, sticking their fingers in, in the Balkan business. Uh, Balkan people is a nice people uh, trying to do what, what they can to to swim with the sharks, uh, but uh, you know uh, it's a simply small pond and a lot of a lot of sharks. A so small pond, a lot of and a lot of crocodiles, and especially those big crocodiles coming from the former empires and colonial powers like uh, France, UK, uh, Germany. So the, all they all they all they want to put their their interest above the interest of the, of the Balkan people. So situation it is uh, what it is. So uh, Balkan Balkan nations really need to sit and start to think what is in their best interest, not is on the interest of those uh, who are um, uh, who are pushing uh, strings. And uh, you know, unfortunately, it's a powder keg. You know, and if if anybody wants to to create some artificial crisis, Balkan is really really fertile ground for that.
Da, bez obzira što je recimo Grčka i Bugarska su deo NATO, deo Evropske unije, po mom mišljenju projekat Evropske unije neće još dugo opstati. Oni već sada u nekom opadanju, duži period, ima ogromne probleme i sa ekonomskom krizom nerešenom od 2008. zatim migranskom krizom. Sada vidimo već da su mnogobrojni protesti u okviru same Evropske unije i da nezadovoljstvo građana raste. Tako da ja mislim da u narednom periodu ovih geopolitičkih promjena imat ćemo sigurno i rekonfiguraciju Evropske unije i mi ne znamo zapravo kako će to izgledati u budućnosti, ali ono što je sigurno da ove zemlje na Balkanu već odavno se smatraju periferijom i nemaju ta prava koje imaju recimo zemlje koje čine jezgro, Francuska i Nemačka u okviru Evropske unije, ja mislim da će to dovesti do jednog procesa regionalizacije u procesu daljeg raspada Evropske unije, jer on je počeo sa izlaskom Velike Britanije, da ne zabavljamo Dakle, mislim da će ići ka procesu regionalizacije i mislim da je u tom smislu jako važno da Srbija razvija tu stratešku saradnju na Balkanu, a koliko je moguće bez nešanja stranih sila, dakle sa Grčkom, sa Bugarskom, pa i sa Rumunijom koju ste mi pomenuli. Even those, those countries, um, Greece, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, they're members of EU, they're members of NATO, Uh, it is evident that uh, European Union as, as a union is less and less union every day than uh, it, it, it was before. So lot, there's a lot of artificial, uh, almost like a glue that, that keeping all of those countries. And to be honest, uh, uh, frankly, those countries are not on the same uh, category as, uh, as, uh, as a core of EU, like uh, Germany and, and, and France. Brits uh, uh, or UK, they smell something is to paraphrase. They smell something is rotten in EU, so that's the reason why they uh, why they left the ship. So you know we know who, who who is leaving the ship and ships start to sink. So European Union is it going to to last longer or not? Is it going to disintegrate? It is just a just a matter of time, and time will tell. But um, uh, it is it is opinion that uh, all of those countries which are now part of the of the EU it will be actually now a, a new form of uh, uh, regionalization so the regions will uh, will become more independent and uh, in that case for instance balkan balkan region it can uh, even the countries are some countries are a member of EU some countries are not so um, uh, it, it is it, it is in interest for those uh, those countries to uh, to regionalize uh, to be uh, within the countries which are in their uh, neighborhood then to get for instance just just to, to, to simplify to get the orders from eu which sitting in Brussels and often had no idea what, what is going on and eu has their own problems uh, uh, look what's going on in germany what's going on in, in france there is a protest uh, uh, those uh, uh, bread makers <laughs> to, to call farmers that uh, People that feed the uh, EU, they are, they are now protesting, and uh, that stuff is not really covering the media because media is uh, working for the, those globalists. So EU may may survive, may not, but it, it is a trend, and that trend uh, we can feel the trend, we can smell the trend that um, uh, from the one central uh, union everything will uh, just re regionalize. So it will be uh, local, local, um, not not even called it fraction. So it will be local, local areas. Which is more uh, more more appropriate? Uh, uh, how old Europe is actually structured? So, but time will tell. Anyway, the Serbia need to need to find uh, its way into that stuff. Just float, stay stay uh, above the water. Right. Thank you very much uh, for this very detailed uh, answer. Uh, Just a short question. Um, Dragana, ili imamo još možda 15 ili 20 minuta. Djeluje mi da smo prešli skoro vrijeme. Aha, dobro, dobro. Ja ne znam, ovaj, majke. Ja, 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 ok, tu. Ja sam sa mnom u redu, nema problema. Možemo do pola deset u lokalnom momu. Vremena, češ pola sada. The answers are very, very interesting and important, I think, for the audience. So we just increased a little bit the, the interview. Um, Dragara, you answered uh, already several of my next que uh, questions, uh, which is very good. Thank you. Um, my mother is from Republika Srpska, from uh, Banja Luka, and my father from Montenegro. Uh, so we know very well this, um, 
artificial borders um, between Serbian people. It doesn't make sense. We are all Serbs and we have borders in between. It's like the Ukrainians and the Russians, which are also Russians and they have a border in between. It doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense. But let's come uh, to my question. Um, the foreign powers try to divide us um, and we can see that especially in Kosovo. So there is a large military base, an American military base, Camp Bonsteel in Kosovo. Um, wh what do you think will be the, the end game? Uh, will we ever be back uh, on Kosovo? Can we achieve this without conflict, with, with, without an armed conflict? And how will it be possible to reunite the Serbian people without uh, violence? Ja, hvala. To je veoma važno pitanje, da li je moguće izbeći konflikt i ja se u potpunosti slažem sa vama. To je politika sa kojom smo mi suočeni poslednjih vekova, ja mislim onoliko koliko mi znamo 500 godina, bazirana na principu sukoba civilizacija ili to je isto imena i Huntingtonova knjiga, ali on je to samo, da kažemo, predstavio javnosti za ovo sadašnje vreme, međutim, to je suština politike koje neki centri moći vode već dugo vekova i na osnovu toga zapravo imaju moć i kontrolu nad globalnim procesima. To je nešto što se zove globalno upravljanje i što je sada već poznato kao tako, i ja sam jako srećna zbog toga što mi sada u vreme u kome živimo imamo mogućnosti da se susretnemo sa jednim procesom razotkrivanja mehanizama globalnog upravljanja. I mislim da je to nešto što je, ja bih rekla, iz Amerike krenulo, jer ako pogledamo u nazad, dakle od nekih knjiga jako važnih koje su objavljene, pa onda preko disidenata koje u ovom slučaju sada sa zapada dolaze na istog, ne kao nekada u komunističko vreme sa istoka na zapad, kao što je Snowden, kao što je Julian Assange i tako dalje, mi vidimo zapravo da iz tih centara je krenula nekakva pobuna protiv sila koje vrše globalno upravljanje. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I can absolutely uh, agree with uh, with Alex. And uh, uh, she mentioned one interesting, uh, interesting book, Clash of Civilization. I think is the name of that book uh, by Huntington, yes. um, which uh, talking about um, all of that long period. Uh, and for Serbia, it's it specifically um, important because we have 500 years, so half a millennia of of problems uh, and clashes of civilizations on on the Balkan. And the situation regarding to the it's it start to turn slowly but steady um, so that glo uh, globalist politics is uh, start to be uh, disclosed so disclosed on the way that now uh, whatever is happening in those countries there are people uh, be before when people start from uh, to escape from Soviet Union, let's say, to the West, they were called dissidents. But now we have uh, quite opposite stuff. Now we have a dissidents from West that that uh, see what is really going on in their society. They, they're trying to put that uh, uh, to, to, to put that to the public, so to, to disclose that what the governments are on the West are doing actually uh, to the pu public, like a Snowden and also Julian Assange. So uh, those people are just just few to mention. There, there, there are some, some, some others, as far as I know, uh, which are... Uh, not not so known, but there's, they're arrested or they're under uh, prosecution. So uh, the uh, the people uh, slowly but steady start to get um, uh, introduced. What is really behind all of this stuff that is happening for millennia? So it's not something that is uh, that is basically overnight. It it, it is it is um, a very complex process of rule and control uh, on, on the masses. But now the masses are. Uh, uh, on, the, on the West, the people on the West, maybe I won't call them a masses, but the people on the West start to understand why is all of that uh, politics um, and what is really uh, really going on with that. 
So, um, and uh, I would just also recommend people to talk. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I I know for the book, but I, I haven't read that book, uh, but I will read it uh, definitely. So, yeah, uh, that is something that is um, uh, that, that may explain to readers what is really the background of, of, of all of that. And uh, we mentioned the book, uh, Ken Bostil on Kosovo, and Kosovo is historically it's a, it's a Serbian territory, it always will be. Even the uh, UN resolution 1244 said that it's, it's Serbian territory, but uh, power power people on the West they simply decided to award uh, Kosovo Albanians with their own states. So there was not even a referendum or any, anything similar to that. So they, they simply declare declare independence. Western countries recognized that. So among them uh, was uh, even Canada and. Uh, there's a reason why I'm not going to, to elections anymore because uh, now I hope that uh, Quebec will uh, get independence one day. So it's uh, uh, eye, eye for eye <laughs> to say uh, my comment. So yeah, it's a, it's a very complex situation, and the, and the bond deal is just uh, something. Bond deal is a tool in in in, the, uh, in this case. Bond deal is simply something that is a tool to achieve some certain tasks which are which are put by the uh, by the powerful in, in the West. Da, potrebno je reći da je zapravo glavni je cilj bombardovanja Srbije, odnosno NATO agresije 1999. godine, bila želja Sjedinjih američkih država da otvore najveću vojnu bazu na teritoriji Evrope u Srbiji. Dakle, Sjedinje američke države imaju bazu Ramštajn u Nemačkoj, koja je takođe ogromna, ali to je vazduhoplovna baza, ovo je najveća baza za kopnenu vojsku na teritoriji Evrope. I s obzirom na to da Srbija nije dobrovodno ispristala, odnosno Jugoslavije u to vreme, predsednik Milošević, on nije prihvatio uslove da Srbija pristane dobrovodno da dozvoli dolazak američke vojske na njenu teritoriju, otvaranje baze, jer govorimo o teritoriji Republike Srbije i Južnoj Srpskoj pokrajini. Nakon toga je praktično jednim falsifikovanjem činjenica Srbija optužena za navodno kršenje prava albanske manjine na Kosovo i Metohiji, što je notorna laž i predstavila ta mainstream mainstream mediji koji su pod kontrolom zapadnih centara moći su predstavili borbu bezbednostnih snaga Srbije sa terorizmom kao napad bezbednostnih snaga srpskih na obične građane i civile. Mislim da je to jako bitno spomenuti zašto i kako se bonsti malazi na teritoriji Srbije. Yeah, regarding to the camp of Bonstil, it's a, it's the largest U.S. base um, in southern Europe and probably the largest um, uh, military base in, in Europe at, um, at all. So uh, one, uh, opening the base, establishing the base uh, in Kosovo was one of the goals of NATO because uh, that's the re that is one of the reasons why NATO performed that aggression in 1999. And uh, obviously President Milosevic uh, refused to, to allow the U.S. or NATO troops to be stationed on, on Serbian territory. So that was one uh, that was one of the reasons why they attacked. But also how to how to uh, prepare the public, how to prepare the, uh, the media for, for, for this aggression was simple. Um, uh, mainstream media on the West, uh, together with um, with the mission, OSCE mission and the, the NATO missions in, in Kosovo, uh, they basically uh, fake all, all facts which are on, on, on the field. Serbian uh, Serbian military and Serbian police uh, perform uh, anti-terrorist actions against um, the criminals from the uh, UCK or Albanian terrorist uh, Kosovo Liberation Army, how they call that. <clears throat> In normal world, in every in every other part of the world, this kind of actions that those guys perform is uh, pure uh, terrorism. But uh, uh, mainstream media, let's name it Fox News, CNN. Yeah, those those medias are the one who basically created uh, the fake stories about uh, Serbian uh, genocide. How they uh, they talk about that uh, Serbian attacks uh, peaceful population, etc. So this is one of uh, this is one of also the reasons how they serve to the public so to prepare public for the for the aggression uh, 
Serbia is an independent country. They couldn't accept really, uh, really conditions uh, because it was uh, humiliating conditions. But uh, at least Serbia put, put the fight on that. It, long story short, uh, everything was prepared. CIA operative William Walker, who was uh, CIA operative, the guy who, who, who also worked in, uh, I think he was in Guatemala or somewhere in the, in, in the Central America. Uh, so guy with uh, with a pedigree, a guy with uh, with a whole lot of histories in, in creating that artificial crisis. Everything was carefully planned. Everything was carefully served. Uh, Western politicians uh, uh, prepared the public for that, and it happened what happened. So Serbia, uh, Kosovo, as a Serbian territory, was uh, hijacked, occupied, and still is occupied. How long it will take? Hopefully, not too much, not too long. But uh, again, time time to tell. So it was a it was a big political game, uh, uh, blaming one one nation to, uh, to to do something that was not even. Uh, not, not a fraction of, of, of that happened, but um, it was simply the way how the 1990s Western politics worked. And I would add, Dragana, to, your, uh, to my interpretation of uh, uh, your, uh, your, your words, uh, what really happened? This is, the, this is something which is an overtear. It, it's an introduction to something that they're trying now to do with Russia. Serbia was like, uh, Serbia was like a, a test ground polygon or test ground of uh, pro proving ground to something that can be applied to Russia in the future, something that can be applied to Iran, something that can, uh, can be applied to China, because we all know that those countries also have a, a different um, regions, different uh, uh, nations, uh, different, different people living in the country. So Yugoslavia was test bed, and that it was successful test bed, because Yugoslavia, we couldn't, we couldn't defend ourselves. Da, apsolutno se slažem a, što se tiče toga da je Jugoslavia bila eksperimentalno polje za pre svega Rusiju kao glavnu metu, ali i za, za druge države i naravno ta doktrina sukoba civilizacija koja je ključna, koja se bazira na a, detektovanju etničkih, kulturoloških, religijskih a, svakakvih razlika koje sigurno postoje u svakom društvu, posebno u multietičkim sredinama, multikulturološkim, religijskim, kao što je Balkan, kao što je Kavkaz, na primjer, gde su zapadni centri moći produbljivanjem razlika između različitih etničkih grupa ili religijskih, kulturoloških stvarali konflikte. Dakle, to je suština kako se ti konflikti stvaraju, kako su nastali i kako i dalje oni imaju dakle, nameru da ih šire po toj osnovi, ali sada to dosta teže ide s obzirom da je dosta razotkrivena pozadina te doktrine. Yes, absolutely. I absolutely agree with the stuff. And it's, it's basically a clash of civilizations. Um, uh, the powerful in the world is uh, using and abusing ethnic differences, religious differences, uh, cultural differences between people that live in one country. And uh, they, they're abusing that, turning people against each other. So that it, it creates artificial crisis and they're, uh, that uh, they're going to exploit political way, military, military way, whatever. So uh, it's it's um, uh, it's a modus operandi, something that is uh, that is um, dragging even from ancient time, from, uh, for Roman times. But uh, as the time progress and the people getting more uh, more educated, uh, more aware of the situation, it's getting uh, less and less. Uh, uh, actually, those powerful. Can find less and less explanations why they're doing that because people are aware and uh slowly but steady the truth is uh, will surface will, will surface so that they will get to, to the surface so it's something that inevitable and uh from the time being yeah they're going to do those um, they're going to uh, abuse that uh, ethnic differences cultural differences religious differences among the people and Whenever they, they see the fertile ground, they're going to try to put the seeds in, in that ground. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that, that's the way how they operate. Global, globalization. Da. Što se tiče Kosova i Metohije, južne srpske pokrajine koje sada u ovom momentu de facto odvojena od Srbije, 
tamo se gradi jedan projekat takozvane kosovske nezavisnosti iza koga su pre svega stajale te stare američke strukture establishmenta političke. To je projekat ili čedo pre svega Billa Clintona i njegove supruge Hillary Clinton. Oni oboje, Bill Clinton ima spomenik u centru Prištine, Hillary Clinton ima i ulicu ako se ne varam i mnogobrojne butike, lokale i tako dalje koje se zovu po njenim imenom kao zahvalnosti, a čak i sin Joe Bidena ima, ako se ne veram, da li trg ili svoju ulicu. Dakle, to govori o tome da su albanski separatisti na Kosovoj Metohiji pre svega zahvalni tom američkom establishmentu koji je de facto kreator projekta Kosovske nezavisnosti. I taj projekat je daleko odmakao, on traje dugo godina, praktično od 1999. godine je krenuo proces realizacije. Naravno, projekat je mnogo ranije osmišljen, ali od 1999. to je evo već skoro 25 godina kako traje i on jeste u nekoj završnoj fazi. Međutim, ono što ja mislim i to je ključna stvar, da će oni ostati u toj završnoj fazi, odnosno nikad neće dočekati konačnu fazu. Jer mi sada već smo prešli u ovom procesu multipolarizacije, dakle govorimo o globalnim procesima, mi smo već prešli u fazu u kojoj nema povratka na staro. Mi više ne živimo u onom svetu u kojem smo živali 90-ih, kada je taj projekat nastao. I on nije uspeo da se završi do kraja, niti sada postoje uslovi u ovoj fazi da on može da se realizuje. Možete? Ja. Bon stil. Kosovo independens, all of that stuff is the cake that was made, that was cooked by now old American establishment. I would add not old, but geriatric American establishment. And particularly we can name Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Bill also has his monument in the center of Pristina. Uh, Hillary has a uh, street, uh, even President Joe Biden, I think his uh, deceased son uh, Bo has a uh, street or, or something like that. So we can see that, we can see that who is behind all of that stuff. And, uh, uh, but, you know, as, as, the time is, as, as the time is passing and all of those creators of artificial country, uh, artificial country of Kosovo, time is passing over them. So the same thing will happen with uh, that uh, that Kosovo project, because this is not 1990s anymore. They can try to sell that story to somebody else, but that's, uh, that that story is almost like a news uh, yesterday's uh, yesterday news. It's it still exists. It will exist uh, for uh, for the some time or for the time being, but in general. Uh, is it that uh, that Kosovo project is going to to fully be finished? Um, there, there are doubts. There are really uh, sincere doubts that it will ever be ever be finished because uh, this is artificial stuff. This is simply artificial stuff made uh, pure uh, regarding to the political reasons. And uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. A, ako govorimo o građanima sejma američkih država, oni nemaju nikakav interes a, u kreiranju kosovske nezavisnosti i to treba spomenuti da a, i to je zasluga tog, a, kako ste rekli, gerijatrijskog establishmenta, da su oni sejma američke države a, učinili najnepopularnijom zemljom na planeti zbog svoje politike, ali suština je o tome da od toga građani sejma američkih država su imali velike štete. Ne govorimo samo o imidžu, već i budžetske štete, o novcu. Ako uzmemo u obzir da najveće koristi finansijske od kreiranja, recimo kosovske nezavisnosti, su upravo imali one ličnosti koje su lobirali za stvaranje te lažne države, kao što je recimo pokojna Madeleine Albright, čija kompanija 
Albright Investment je recimo dobila neke resurse kao što su telekomunikacije na Kosovu ili bivši komandant NATO snaga Wesley Clark čija firma takođe dobila finansijske sredstva. Znači šta je suština korišćenjem američkih državnih resursa kao što je američka vojska, kao što je američka politika u rukama nekih lica. Dakle, korišćenjem američkih resursa se zapravo nanosi šteta građanima Amerike, a koristi od toga imaju pojedina lica kroz njihove kompanije gde oni zapravo svu korist izvoče u sobstvene džepove. All this stuff about Kosovo. The question is Who is, uh, who is profiting with that? Not, Amer not ordinary American citizens. So ordinary American citizen in Boston, in New York, uh, anywhere in the US, has nothing, uh, has no benefits about that. But the government of US is using, uh, is using uh, resources, taxpayers' money, uh, US, uh, using US military to enforce uh, the politics which benefits only particular numbers of American society. And we, we can name that. This is Clinton's. There is a Madeleine Albright that has a, uh, her own uh, company that also has uh, shares in the telecommunication. I think it's mining uh, or, or something like that. Also Wesley Clark, a former uh, NATO, NATO Pact uh, commander. So that money, American uh, public money uh, in, in uh, US, uh, US military, in US government, is actually invested in uh, for the benefits of uh, of uh, individuals and for the ordinary american uh, citizen there is simply uh, nothing of that so the same bill uh, single american can make a single dollar of that simply uh, it, it can be more simply but his representative and lobbyists that uh, that uh, um, those geriatric lobbyists for now that rule the country basically is the one who, who are going to benefit so benefit uh, is only for the for the designated few but for the for the rest is simply nothing uh, and th that that will be very very uh, simple uh, simplified summary of why everything is happening not only and uh, why everything is why everything happened as a past tense in uh, in kosovo and why it's happening now in uh, in other parts of the world especially ukraine Da, samo dodajte ono da zapravo nije samo finansijska šteta građana Amerike, već i šteta imidža koja je veoma važna jer zapravo Amerikanci postoju svuda u svetu nepopularni, nedobrodošli, a to je zasluga ovih pojedinaca koji na tome zarađuju. Besides the economic, Dragana remind me of this, besides the economic zero for the ordinary American people, the damage is on the image of Americans, uh, the image of Amer first the uh, U.S. as a country, then uh, the image of American people, because uh, all of this stuff that is going, uh, that happened in Serbia, that is going, going now in the world, created the damage of one's very popular uh, country. So people can feel that. The Amer ordinary Americans can feel that uh, uh, when they go to, to the other countries. So um, uh, as, as the time progresses, less and less popularity for, uh, for the ordinary Americans and for the, for the U.S. as a country is in the world. So what, uh, and, uh, the trend is that one day it will just get uh, so, so close that the U.S. Be, uh, will be popular only to, only, only to itself. That, uh, that, is, uh, that is one of the points. So beside the material gain for individuals and zero material gains for the for, for a majority of population, U.S. is, going, uh, US is, uh, is uh, losing, uh, losing credibility. Uh, uh, and it, it, that, that is not fault of the ordinary people, but that is the fault of, of establishment. Da, i da završimo što se tiče Kosova i Metohije. Ja sam napisala jedan tekst koji sam objavila u ruskim medijima, ne sećam se da li je preveden i na engleski, ali uglavnom njegov naziv je Kosovo je novi Afganistan u centru Evrope. Gde sam ja napravila paralelu s onim što se desilo u Kabulu, dakle da je američka vojska napustila Afganistan gde je imala svoje uporište. Mislim da će se isto to desiti i sa bazom Bonstil, 
Kosovu na Kosovo i Metohiji, jer to zaista nije, taj projekat nije održiv kao prvo, drugo rekli smo da sami građani sjevih američkih država od toga nemaju interes i treća stvar, globalizacija i procesi multipolarizacije vode ka tome da to postaje neodrživ projekat. Tako da ja mislim da budućnost Kosova i Metohije je sigurno u Srbiji, opredeliti vreme nije lako, da li će se to desiti za dve, pet, deset godina, ali u istorijskom pogledu to nije veliki period. Ono što je sigurno, dakle, da će ta teritorija biti reintegrisana u sastav Srbije. Ja se nadam da ćemo izbeći konflikt zbog toga što rekli smo da je naše područje žestoko nastradalo istorijski u mnogobrojnim konfliktima, posebno su Srbi bili žrtve velikih ratova i nastradali u ratovima, tako da ja se nadam, nama nije u interesu da ratujemo ni sa Albancima, ni sa bilo kim u ovom regionu. Ja se nadam da će reintegracija Kosova i Metohije proći bez jednog novog konflikta i sukoba. Ono što je očigledno to je da su neki centri moći namenili, dakle, ukoliko ne mogu da zadrže taj projekat, da ponovo postaknu neke sukobe, ali reći ću opet da to nije lako ni u ovom slučaju, jer i sami Albanci koji su videli šta su dobili žrtvom, govorimo o običnom narodu, dakle ne o teroristima, oni su jednostavno, i oni napuštaju tu teritoriju. Sada je nekada je bilo pre recimo u vreme Tito i Jugoslavije 2 miliona Albanaca koji su živali na Kosovo i Metohiji i sada se procenjuje da ih ima negde između 600 i 800 hiljada, ali verujte od kako je Evropska unija izvršila viznu liberalizaciju, već su sada rezervisani svi letovi iz Prištine u zemlje zapadne Evrope do kraja godine. Tako da je to jedan trend i samih Albanaca da napuštaju tu teritoriju i to je nešto što Srbi ide na ruku, ali sa druge strane imamo politički pritisak iz Brisela, iz Evropske unije, koji je zaista veliki. Međutim, kao što smo rekli, to jednostavno nije izvodljivo da se taj projekat dovede do kraja. And to conclude the story about uh, Kosovo, Dragana wrote the article, uh, it was published in Russian, uh, and uh, the title is Kosovo is, uh, is the future of Afghanistan. And, uh, so it's, uh, in that article, Dragana compared the situation in Afghanistan, uh, late situation in Afghanistan before the U.S. withdrawal, withdrawal from and NATO withdrawal from, from it, uh, and uh, situation uh, that that, uh, that can be in Kosovo. And according to her opinion, uh, the bone steel, the camp bone steel, the biggest uh, U.S. base, is likely to have the, the same fate uh, as, um, as uh, the leaving of Kabul in, I think it was 2020, uh, right? Uh, so that uh, when the U.S. Army is in the middle of the night, uh, was actually kicked by people who, who on motorcycles and, and, and pickups. That's my <laughs> my addition to that. So so uh, 20 years, I, I was in Afghanistan for, for two tours, so I know the situation, how, how was there. Uh, 20 years spending billions and achieve nothing. The same will be the situation in Kosovo. So, uh, and regarding to the people in Kosovo, um, uh, and uh, it is firm belief, uh, belief that uh, Kosovo will, will be reintegrated in Serbia. Uh, the reason for that is the situation is changes. Uh, the situation in, in Europe the world is changed. And it changed on a kind of positive way regarding to, the, to that issue. And um, what is important, uh, even people who live in Kosovo, and according to some, some um, uh, lists, it was about 2 million, uh, 2 million of them uh, in the former Yugoslavia, when Yugoslavia was one, was one country. Today is about between 600 and 800,000. So it's evident uh, either first number was not correct or those 1.2 million, let's say, uh, left the country. And the uh, European Union, uh, they put the, uh, the visa waiver for um, Kosovo, they, Kosovo Albanians, I would not call them Kosovo citizens, because Kosovo is not a country. Uh, Kosovo citizens, so they really accepted that with open arms, because now that is the good opportunity without taking Serbian passport to go to work in, in, in Western Europe. 
Uh, for Serbia, that is actually a positive thing because uh, once when, the, when the, those people are investing in Europe, likely they're going to stay invested in Europe and Europe has all, all, all their own problems. So uh, as the situation has changed, uh, Kosovo, this is our wish and also it's uh, highly likely that it will be uh, reintegrated back to Yugoslavia. Is it going to happen? One year, five years, ten years, fifty years? To Serbia, to Serbia, not Yugoslavia. To Serbia, sorry, sorry. To, to, to Serbia. <laughs> To Serbia, yeah. So it, it's going to is it, it's going to happen one day. Uh, we waited 500 years to to get rid of Ottoman occupation, so we we can wait uh, that too. No, we as, as a human beings, but uh, as a nation, as, as, as a country, Serbia want peace. Serbia doesn't want to fight, and Serbia believe that it will not be. Uh, uh, and Serbia is working not to be any any armed conflict uh, to achieve this goal, but. Uh, it is situation. It is what it is, and uh, with the current politics, uh, there there are really chances uh, that something like that may uh, not not a, not a conflict, but the, the peaceful reintegration in, in, in uh, uh, or coming back home uh, of Kosovo to Yugoslavia to Serbia <laughs> will, will happen one will happen one day. So yeah, that will be conclusion. I, I believe Dragan that I interpret your your thoughts. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, no problem. Okay, then thank you very much. Uh, I tremendously enjoyed this discussion. It was uh, it was great, and I think it is very inform informative for our uh, listeners, um, especially in the West. So thank you very much, uh, Dragana. Um, I hope we can uh, continue this discussion another day. And um, if you want, do you want to tell our viewers where where they can find your work and uh, work? they can find, find, uh, find, find you. Yes, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. It will be my pleasure to continue to speak and uh, to work with you. And uh, in the last time, we have a lot of uh, colleagues from the United States uh, who became the members of the Center for Geostrategic Studies. So we are open for cooperation to everyone. Uh, and uh, everyone who is interested in our work can find a lot of information of, uh, at uh, our website, uh, geostrategy at uh, RS. Uh, and also we have a YouTube channel, uh, Center for Geostrategic Studies, where we are publishing on the Serbian, Russian and English uh, language. So uh, I, I, I think that a lot of people can find something interesting. And uh, yes, I, I want to send the best regards uh, to all your viewers, especially uh, the people from the United States. Yes, thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Mike, for your interpretation. <laughs> I hope that I, I, I can pace. <laughs> really, it's, it's, really, it's, it's so advanced, uh, advanced language that is really hard to, to translate word for word. But the thoughts are something that I think it's very, it's very important. And the, and the message. 